Welcome, everybody. We're rolling into week two of NECC Overwatch here. It is myself, Possible, alongside Neely, bringing you all the action, well, for this first game at the very least, and it should be a fun one. We've got Dartmouth College versus Hawking College to start off the day. Absolutely here. Uh, Dartmouth College starting off slow with an 0-1 start here, and Hawking starting off with a win, so we're going to hopefully for Dartmouth, they're going to be able to uh, get off to a one and one start here. They didn't have as much preseason time as Hawking. Hawking did only go one and two in their preseason, so a lot of light here for Dartmouth to get their first win. Yeah, it's still early in the season. We got plenty of weeks of Overwatch left to play, so taking a, an L early is fine as long as, you know, that ends up being maybe one of the stronger teams. We'll see how Center College, the team that they lost to last week, performs. But Moving on, Hawking College just want to keep that dub streak rolling, you know? Get, get this win over Dartmouth, build up a bit of momentum, and carry that into the later parts of the season. Absolutely. Getting a couple wins early can really carry you through, kind of get you closer to that playoff picture, which is what everybody is truly shooting for here. I'm definitely interested to see what these teams are going to run. Last week, I got to see a matchup between a team that was completely dive-centered versus a team that never got off Brawl, and the Brawl team actually won. So I'd be interested to see if teams move more towards the dive mirror. That's kind of what I expected last week. and was a bit surprised. I mean, that's the fun thing about collegiate, right? You know, yeah. sometimes you get, you know, 
uh, borderline contenders level, crazy squads. Sometimes you get high skill squads that just have insane strategies. Sometimes you just get people who want to go in and fight, 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 fight. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an entirely different beast, but an incredibly entertaining one to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I I'm a Ryan player, so I like seeing a little bra. I like seeing <laughs> that kind of stuff. So. We'll have to see what we get here tonight from Dartmouth and mm. Hawking here. Of that, we are of the same mind. Reinhardt will forever and always be that number one, uh, that number one tank for me. I believe we're just gonna head pretty quickly into the game here. We don't have too much information about these teams, so there's not much to preface. This is, I believe, their stream debut here, at least in the NECC. So I'm excited to see how we're gonna be starting us off, where we're even going to be starting map-wise. Because that first map, that control map generally is always very... It's a I don't want to say the word chaotic. It, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, I've played in a few amateur leagues myself. And, you know, nothing crazy, just like 3,500. And you, what you kind of get out of control is one team can just dominate control, but it's about those next maps. I consider the next couple maps more based around real Overwatch mechanics. And control is kind of mm -hmm. just this free for all. Maybe you kind of get first percentage. If you get first percentage, you have a massive advantage here. But it's still, it shows for different styles of Overwatch. It does bring a lot more brawl. There's usually one map in here that both teams deem is brawl centered. And I'm excited to see what we see here. I know this map can be considered brawl centered, but also if you've got a good Widow player, Widow likes to come out and play on this map. Already out on to Ilios, and hey, we're we're getting what we want here. Nearly, we're seeing yeah. those Ryan's getting hovered at the very least. Now, I mean, they yeah. got a lot of time to change that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it too much here. But I am excited to see how these teams tackle because, like you said, I mean, control is pretty often brawly, right? I mean, here on Ruins, yeah. we get those Widowmakers. You can see Dill two one six already hovering over that. I believe he's just going to be sticking onto it. Excited to see how that plays out. Going into a Farah, though. Super Freak's going to have to be careful where he peeks his head out. Yeah, absolutely. The Widow Farah matchup can always be interesting. It should be a bit Widow favor here, but I always like a team that pulls out the Farah. It's usually a bit slower style, but both teams are also going to opt for that pocket. Not many sight lines right now for Dill216. And meanwhile, Dartmouth are just sticking together. Super Freak on the floor with the rest of the team. Now poking the head out into main. Wonder if they're expecting that Widowmaker. Pepper and shots into the main. Oh, now no, there's a Widow as he takes a nasty headshot there, but not gonna go down. And Tom Bald, he's just gone. He walks himself onto the point and not gonna be staying there too long. Does get resurrected, but that gives opening for Snorty to head into the back line and really tear them to sunder. Dartmouth are going to be heading back as Hawking capped the point. Yeah, Hawking are going to take that one early, and when the enemy Ryan falls, uh, it usually opens up a ton of space for you, even though the res is able to come out there. So much has already happened, so much damage has been laid into your team. I mean, look, you can see right now, Buckeye going to be leading that ultimate charge on the Ryan Shatter. He could even open up this next fight. Tomball is only at 73 here, but if you look at all of the ults, uh, Hawking is far in the lead. There is that amplification matrix, so Dartmouth do have a way to force themselves in should they use that early. Ooh, Super Freak on the side, not prepared for the charge! That Jinx is rolling out with the far, nearly the Mercy too. Do have a bit of a DC for Dartmouth, so they're gonna get some time to think about how they want to finish this fight, but it's not off to a very good start. That immortality field was already out there, he lost their far. I think, uh, I think Hawking are probably gonna push the offensive here. Yeah, Hawking is going to be able to, uh, should be able to do something here. Uh, it is always a bummer when you lose your player because that is all charge that you're just not going to get back. But Buckeye does invest the shatter. I think he thought that Tom Bald was going to go for the uh, fire strike through the window, the amplification matrix for that 200 damage fire strike. Tries to sneak a shatter and doesn't quite find it, but even still, losing a, going down a player at all in a DC format is tough. You know, you just don't have that all charge to work with. And we're back here. Yeah, I believe we are heading back into the match, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting. Hopefully soon. Hopefully. Uh, Well, I mean, it's always actually, that's going to be a bummer for, uh, for Hawkeye right there, actually. 
you know, they don't lose the player, but they're gonna they're gonna totally reset the the match. So I'm oh, guessing. That, okay. What are you seeing? Oof. No, I, I'm not. I'm not in lobby. You're giving me the eyes on everything right now. <laughs> huh. Ooh, so we have a. So we're uh, uh, getting word that there was a, a bit of an awkward reset here. <laughs> we're gonna get that sorted for you folks, ASAP. Uh, and while that lobby stuff is getting sorted out. Um, let's just talk about what we're seeing compositionally then, Neely. Uh, we'll we'll let the players, the admins, do their thing, and we'll yeah. just we'll just you know go to thirty thousand feet. We'll talk about the comps. What do you like from both these teams thus far? Well, I mean, it's hard. You, you didn't we didn't really get to see too much. Obviously, Hawkeye got first percentage ticked over to them, which is always huge. But mm -hmm. you know, one team opted for the Ana, the other team opted for the Baptiste, and both teams opted for a Mercy Pocket. One was going to be pocketing a Faro, one was going to be pocketing an, a, a Widowmaker. And with how uh, Hawking came in, uh, nobody was really going to, or actually how both teams came in, kind of on that, well, I guess you can't say right side, but on that inside half of the map, it's hard for either the Faro or the Widow to get a lot of sight lines. So those two weren't really the stars of the fight. The stars of the fight were kind of on the front line. Uh, mm -hmm. a Buckeye there kind of taking over for Hawking. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Zarya was just getting so much charge early on. I mean, we, we saw how Jinx Beam just absolutely melted Super Freak, right? On that Farah, yeah. just point blank beaming down. That was actually some pretty impressive tracking, if I'm being completely honest there. So I'm excited to see how that how the front line battle the tank battle you know we were already we came in talking about the reinhardt's man we got to keep yeah. on that tank train it's yeah. ever so important yeah i mean i hope they stick with it it's a it's a great style of overwatch to spectate not that we don't like to see a little bit of mobility in our tanks mm -hmm. but ryan's do get their hands dirty it's like they say in baseball to get a ground ball you got to get your glove dirty and ryan is all about getting that hammer dirty as he goes in there trying to swing on the other Reinhardt, but now we're going to get a completely different uh, map here. Uh, what is this? Lighthouse? Yes, we're going to be at Lighthouse. A little bit on high grounds on both sides, and then a far away point of the Lighthouse to kind of get to. Usually it's a race to that to see who can cap first. A very, very different beast, Lighthouse, and as such, we can see some adjustments coming from both Hawking and Dartmouth. No longer, still, still a hit scan here for Hawking, but not the Widowmaker. I, I like this adjustment from Dill one, uh, 216. I, I don't think the Widow has the, the effective range, the, the sight lines you really need. The McCree is the more short range answer and version of that. Going to be pretty good going into uh, Soxen as well. As long as you can hit that flashbang, as long as you can keep Super Freak at bay as well. Absolutely. And it looks like. Oh, Dylan's actually going down a really quick two flounder right there. And the speed boost is proving to uh, give uh, Hawking all the space. Gives Bucky a little speed. Snorty also goes down. But the rest of the picks are coming in for Hawking. And now they're going to be kind of coming off this point, trying to clean up once we're at left. And what great positioning there from Hawking College. They know their composition is going to play better on the point and outside of Dill 216 they were all able to sit their foot on the objective and sort of just juggle themselves in and out. The Zarya barriers as well as the damage allowed them to just burn through Tombald's shield and play that shield game. Now they're coming back in Nano, isn't that the ready for Dartmouth? You have been, or Munchsax has been pulling overtime on those heals already, right? Gonna lose a friend, but it doesn't matter. There goes the Nano in, and Tombald is now brawling as Super Freak picks them off from a distance, has the dead eye to boot, and that is gonna be Dartmouth flipping the point. Dartmouth does a really good job right there. They lose two, I believe, in the beginning. They actually lose their Moira, but they still choose to invest that nano boost, which keeps their Ryan up and swinging on the point. And it's deadly once that Ryan gets in there. He's also going to build up his Earth Shatter off of that. So two Shatters on each side. We're going to see which Ryan can stand taller going into this fight. Mind Games now in full effect for these two German engineers. Mm -hmm. Or I guess they're not really engineers works on his own suit. We'll take that one. I thought that was going to be the shatter right there, but Tom Bull's just getting pressured down. He can't even keep the shield up, and now there's no line to stop it. I mean, Buckeye, he does get slapped, so he's not going to be able to throw it out, but he hardly even needs to. The rest of his team is just melt the way. A whole hog keeps him at bay, and I mean, Flounder's doing his best, but he gets booped off the edge. Great little right click there from Hombolt, and with the sound barrier carrying Hawking onto the point, they're going to flip it on back. 
Bowser does do a good job there getting two though because Humboldt did not want to use that beat drop but once he lost two of his members that was a very winnable fight that almost turned sour and uh, he had to invest that uh, beat drop to ensure that Hawking was going to capture that point. Now a lot of ultimates though on the side of Hawking. This is going to be very scary to retake for Dartmouth. Oh and I mean come on. He can't do anything. He was on the flank looking for a hook, but he just gets melted. There off. Here comes all the damage with the Death Blossom. And Dartmouth are wiped from the face of the map. Yeah, great setup right there. They put the grab down. They saved the Bumble for the Reaper so he can't get stunned up by Hog or McCree. Hog was actually coming back from spawn anyway, but nothing could stun him up. Forces the damage to go through. Now they still have a High Noon and a Shatter to try to close this point out for Hawking. Nearly that coalescence too, so some sustain as well. Buckeye just playing this shadow pretty safe. Ooh, can't say the same about Deadly Mouse. Overextends a bit, and that costs him everything. There's a shatter, and there's the cleanup. Hawking College, we had a bit of an awkward reset, but they're still going to be able to take away the first round on Ilios. Yeah, you know they would have been a little bit upset after getting that first point capture <laughs> on, the, uh, on the last map, but Blizzard... Tries to do Dartmouth a solid there, isn't going to quite pan out Dartmouth's favor, and uh, Hawking will come out on top. Trying to keep, trying to get that 2-0 going early here into the into the league, but I'm not, I'm not counting Dartmouth out yet. That's just one map of control. Sometimes, you know, you come to well with the Bing well in the middle and anything can happen. I truly think anything can happen on this map, because who knows what either team's going to run. Looking like Hog or Risa Mirror right now, though. Yeah, we get that pulled pork combo right now, and I, I think this could potentially give an edge to Dartmouth, right? I mean, Flounder was already showing propensity for that Roadhog. Wasn't able to get quite the value he was looking for against the Rhine Zarya, against that Brawl, but well is a very different beast, especially when you're enabled by an Orisa pit. Yeah, and Super Freak coming out here on the far, which is rather surprising because he's not going to have that mercy to keep him up. He's going to have to play his corners very safe. Do love this positioning from Hawking College and Super Freak. Man, what well, you said, safe. He is already dead, unfortunately. So there, you lose a lot of that long-range damage, a lot of the poke, a lot of the shield pressure, and you lose your main tank and off tank. Both Flounder and Tombald sent to an early grave as Hawking Cap. A jinxing meme and uh, Buckeye kind of come together there for that pulled port combo that you were talking about. They hit the halt, they hit the hook, and they put him in the well. Always a deadly well right here when you have these two characters. Anything that can control your team uh, is scary on well. And now they're just going to kind of let him come in. Hook comes out and gets blocked by the Arisa Shield. And Hawking College are in a very powerful position now. They can just spam into that choke point as long as they're watching their flanks, making sure that Flounder, Super Freak, and Soxen don't get too feisty. They're going to be just fine. Just dipping their toes on the objective. Hawking College don't have to play to win this fight. They can just stall this out. But regardless, they get that pick. They move on in. They are unafraid of Dartmouth right now. They're just going to blow them away. Yeah, I, I can't really get over how much I am enjoying this from Hawking. You know that there's some good coaching going on when there's the, when the tanks are always on the same page. Every time a halt goes, a hook gets thrown at it. Whether it gets blocked or not, there's that deadly threat of a free kill for Hawking. And it's kind of putting resources at bay. Hook early goes on to the reset, but they're going to get a little chance to regroup. I mean, we do have a lot of arts, alts coming up for Dartmouth. It's kind of a now or never scenario. They already pulled uh, Dill216 into the pit too, so you don't have to worry about that attack visor. Super Freak can now play a little bit more open, but you don't have Tombold anymore. No shields. Now you just have to walk into the damage of the enemy supercharger all alone without any sort of support. And that means your own supercharger is going to just wear out. There's a whole hog getting a lot of Dartmouth, and it's just going to chew through those front two members. We're taking up to 90% and Dartmouth don't have much left in the tank. Dartmouth's got a couple alts, so they're gonna have to rush this Barrage back. It's gonna have no support, but here it comes right now. Barrage lays down onto the soldier, gets slept up though, still alive in space being created. Nano Boost comes out onto both teams. Reaper absolutely chopping through that Arisa and Hawking looking to put this one over the top. First fight is so important here on Well, and Hawking get it done time and time again. It'll be 100 to 0 to send us out at Ilios and to get Hawking College their first win in this series. Yeah, well done there from Hawking College. 
trying to show that their 1-0 is more important than them going 1-2 and two in scrims in the preseason. So, Snorty here on the Reaper. Was he nanoed? Was he bubbled? I, I wonder which map this was on. It's going to be when he gets the bubble. Oh, this is the, the grab, grab, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the grab in from Jinx meme. Up over top. And he dunks on their heads. Beautiful teamwork there. And Hawk and College have had beautiful teamwork just in general, right? Whether it was that uh, ultimate combination, whether it was the halt hooks that you were talking about on Well, or even back on the uh, faux version of Ruins that we got, where yeah. they were able to push together and really time mm -hmm. their bubbles effectively. I'm loving what we're seeing from Hawking, man. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's nothing against Dartmouth, of course, but... You can just see the, the difference when that Hawking is making to come out so strong in these maps. You know, they they do just combo everything that they do. They have a plan, you know, as someone that has played on some of these teams before, not these college teams, very amateur sure. style teams, you know, you just kind of know you just, all right, what are we doing, guys? We're going to, okay, we have Reaper all grab, use it. Okay, we're running Halt Hook. We're going to continue to use it all the time and you know that they've scrimmed and scrimmed and scrimmed and practiced mm -hmm. and practiced and practiced to make sure that they can do all these things yeah absolutely and for dartmouth i think there's some fundamentals that are pretty solid but some that they need a little bit of work on personally i don't know how you feel about this nearly i wasn't super a fan of a lot of their composition choices yeah uh, uh the roadhog on lighthouse not my favorite and yeah. while I definitely preferred it once we got on to well, I don't think that the Faro worked too well into double hit scan, right? We had McCree yeah. and Soldier 76. That is pretty difficult for Faro to actually get footing in a match like this. Yeah, no, absolutely. It seems like they wanted to run the Faro, but then the supports didn't want to combo that with the Mercy, which is, you know, if you're going to run Faro at this level, you, you know, really most any level, you do just need yeah. that Mercy, whether they have double hit scan or not, because... You're going to be so far away from those healers. You're going to be flying above them. It puts a lot more stress onto them to heal you. And it gets very, very difficult uh, to keep a comp up like that. But they opened up on that, you know, faux map that you called it uh, with the pharmacy. So mm -hmm. I was surprised they, they didn't stick to it going into well because it can be a good pharmacy map. Farah has that boop in her back pocket to put things into the well. But I do wonder if they will stick with a Farah style. They didn't seem to have a Lucio player uh, like Hawking did because they didn't ever opt for it. They ran a Moira Ana. They ran Brig Ana a little bit. I think on well, they did have a Lucio. But regardless, I wonder if they're going to stick more with the Mercy style comps as opposed to Lucio speed. Yeah, I think for Dartmouth, the key is just getting a synergistic comp, now, right? Like a wholesale... Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do a brawl, or we do a dive, or we do a uh, some sort of far mercy comp, right? Just mm -hmm. getting something where the entire composition is all on the same page and making sure that you can synergize those things together. Because things, you know, we could see those synergies really working out for Hawking College across mm -hmm. both real rounds and the, you know, a little bit of a weird one that we got at yeah. the very beginning. Uh, regardless, though, I mean, Hawking College, they're off to a good start. You know, they didn't even drop a map last week against Kansas Wesleyan. Uh, so 4-0 in the regular season, map-wise, that is. Let's see if they can keep it going. Absolutely. Uh, what are they looking to come out on right now? It's looking... Did they switch sides? No, they have not switched sides. I needed to check that. Sometimes they swap, sometimes <laughs> they don't. But it's looking like Buckeye and Hawking are going to be on the defense here. And Tombald is looking to go for the Widowmaker. Was Tombald not the Reinhardt on last map? I'm trying Tom to see. Tombald was absolutely the Reinhardt. It seems that okay. Saxon and Tombald have roll swapped okay. for this second map. Perhaps oh. it. I mean, I would have to imagine it's probably a scenario where Tombald can play the Widowmaker because yeah. it didn't look like Tombald was uncomfortable on the Reinhardt. Um, maybe wasn't getting the same sort of resources that Buckeye was. We'll see how that changes. We do have a much more synergistic comp for Dartmouth. You know, they got that Rhine Zarya. That's the tank duo I really like to see, especially on King's first. Yeah, absolutely. And they have the Mercy to go with the Widow to kind of keep her alive if anything does go up to pressure her. And then they have the Ana for the Reinhardt. And everybody likes to see Rhine Zarya on King's Row. It's kind of the dream comp that everyone wants to see. And Widow taking that early sightline on the top right and gets her head ripped off by the Hanzo. 
Still 2162 prepared for that. Now with a player advantage, Hawking are trying to push their luck. They're gonna lose Snorty though. Is gonna get resurrected, obviously. That's one of the benefits of running that Mercy. Tombold switching over to the Genji. Mmm, that's an interesting one. Genji, uh is in an interesting place right now, all things considered. You do have that nano actually already. Munchsax has gotten these nanos so quickly, and now Soxen can push on forward. There is an anti to keep him at bay. He's not gonna be able to get that healing, so he just has to retreat some while that res comes out, and that gives a shatter over to Buckeye, charging forward to try and tear through their lines right now. Struggling to do so, though, and I believe Dartmouth are just backing off. Yeah, there's a good shatter right there, kind of... Oh forces uh, Hawking to, or I'm sorry, Dartmouth to push back right there, but it doesn't find the Reinhardt. Genji going in, trying to chop up this Hanzo. That is what he's been going for. Super Freak finds Humble, but Tombolt goes down in the back line. Tire to try to help sustain right now. And Tire coming in onto the point, finds the Zarya, and Super Freak nice. also manages to go down. And some insinuating brawl here. I had a hiccup but... there, so I only caught the back <laughs> end of the fight, but I gotta wondering. say, still si say I'm loving what I'm seeing from Hawking. They only really use the Rip Tire, and it seems the Valkyrie to win that fight too, right? And I mean, mm -hmm. Tombold is kind of struggling to work up to this blade right now. We've got a second Nano for Munchsax, and it still can't go on to the Genji to try and pierce through this. There will be a grab available, so there's some room for Dartmouth to work with at least. Yeah, they're gonna have to grab, they're probably gonna just staple that nano right onto the Reinhardt. As I say it, Soxen goes down, but uh, Tomball finds his counterpart on Dill 2-1-2-2-1-6. High new, just kind of zoning everybody back. Grab goes down, they're trying to lay some damage into that, and it's looking like Dartmouth has found a foothold in this first point in King's Row. And they will have the blade to go into next fight. Dartmouth will finally get at least one point on the board and get that first cap now. I mean, not just the blade, but nano blade to carry yeah. you through, right? So we're looking for Buckeye to get a crazy shatter or Humboldt to really hit that sleep dart. But, ooh, okay, one shatter does come through and Flounder has overextended a bit. That allows Hawking to actually come up and play this choke point. Pushing through, it's maybe a little bit risky, but they're gonna just chill. And as long as they play here, I mean, especially with a Junkrat, a Hanzo, we have the Graviton and Dragon Surge available. This is a nasty choke for Dartmouth to push through now. Yeah, there comes the grab, and they're going to send the Dragon in. It's only going to tie up that Zarya, not really getting everything that they wanted out of it, but they should get the space that they wanted, and they're going to try to see if they can use that space to clean up the rest. Blade comes out, Nano lands right onto him, takes Snorty down. Now he's going to get the dash reset and go right back in there, starts chopping away at the Zarya and finds her as well. I'm not sure if he's going to make it out of this one, but he finds what he needs to win this team fight and turn it around. They just kind of want to fight the grab Dragon, which is almost unheard of on King's Row. We'll see how hard Hawking can actually hold this. They're just going to charge their way on backwards. But that gives a lot of cart progress over to Dartmouth here. We do have the Rip Tire available, so unless someone is able to pick that out of the air, Snorty is likely going to be getting a nasty little multi-kill coming into this next fight. Not in the ideal position to actually make that happen. Now going to head up the stairwell and try to land the tire on the heads of Dartmouth more than likely as the rest of the team comes on out. Uh, it doesn't really hit much though. The bubble prevents all of the damage onto Soxen, so the best tool that Hawking had to reclaim this fight is gone. They'll still get Tombolt and a nice shatter. That's three on the floor. Buckeye brings it back, and with a nano, he'll just cleave them down. Yeah, that's what you want to see right there. It's really the biggest shatter we've probably got to see on King's Row. I'd like to see a little bit more, but great little tire to kind of take the re out of Hawking. And then, right after that, they pushed in with the Junkrat still spamming and then put the Nano onto the Rhine and let him do the rest. And Hawking back at this choke point. You can tell they know this map. They want to just give Dartmouth as hard of a time as they can. And their tanks will be gone! No more Reinhardt. The res will come through, sure. But how much damage is your team taking? In the meantime, enough for Super Freak to hit the floor. Enough for them to get grabbed and dragon and everything thrown into Dartmouth right now as Hawking holds strong. Yeah, they absolutely put him away with that combo right there. But on the side of Dartmouth, they're going to build up that Nano Blade once again. They have a grab. They have a shutter. For all intents and purposes, they should win this next fight. But if Snorty brings this uh, Rip Tire out late, he might be able to get a few to swing it back. Sixty seconds. 
Tombald already was able to work miracles with one nano blade. He's gonna have to pull that off again as we are under a minute now, and he's already gone. He's at the floor. Oh, and the rest of Dartmouth, now they're on the defensive. They're just trying to back on up, get their Genji without losing anyone else. But the, once again, the Ryan is down. Once again, we're pushing forward off the back of another shatter from Buckeye. And Hawking College aren't letting Dartmouth breathe. Yeah, there's not an ounce of oxygen in the air right now, and it's all because of Buckeye. Every time he charges up this Shatter, he uses it and finds at least two or three, and then they're able to just push right on through. But as I said, going into last fight, if they can make it before getting ulted upon, Dartmouth has a good shot to take this second point. Look how far back that this payload has rolled, though. Mm -hmm. Such a long way to go, and it'll be going in overtime. Grav with the Dragon Blade. This has to be the big combo they were looking for. Tombo, it's one, but he only gets one. The rest does come through for Soxen, and Buckeye isn't going to be around to protect his team anymore. So Dartmouth are going to be able to pull this off and keep this overtime going, but still one more fight for Hawking before it ends, more than likely. Don't take it as cleanly as they would have liked, but... The, the nano blade created enough pressure on the back line that the front line was able to push in and do the rest with the grab. Soxen's gonna probably have to use this shatter to keep them off the point if they try to go for a quick recontest here, and it looks like Buckeye will. Getting there right in the nick of time. Dragon Strike at the ready, it just goes straight on the cart. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just a formality at this point for Hawking College. They'll stop the overtime, they'll stop the second point. And Dartmouth are going to be stopped in their tracks. Now have to get a very strong defense if they want to tie this series. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, but if you're, uh, if you're Dartmouth, you didn't get full held, everything is winnable right now. Yeah, that's always what you gotta be saying in those comms is that it's absolutely oh, yeah. winnable. And that's really all you can really go on right now, but. And you know why things are winnable? Why? Because here at the NECC, we are brought to you by some fantastic people, one of which is Metapro Gaming, a full-service esport management, developmental, and consulting company. Meta provides esports coaching, college esports management, and arena design, and equipment. So make sure you visit them at metaprogaming.gg to learn more and get all the resources you can. Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully... Dartmouth's going to put the enemy in the respawn. Respawn products are forged for all-day comfort for nice. content creators, professionals, and casual players, or anyone looking to upgrade their setup. Respawn has been battle-tested and achieves a level of comfort that leaves competitors in the dust. Live to play another day with Respawn, your battle-ready partner. Leave them in the dust. I can't think of a more accurate term for how Hawk and College have been playing this. Phenomenal thus far. They're gonna switch up their style now over to more of that dive, but it's dive tanks with more of a poke-esque uh, support, or not support line, DPS line. <laughs> so we're gonna be waiting to see if Snorty or DYL can actually get some long range. It seems like DYL has baited me a little bit. He just did the classic uh, Widowmaker in the window thing. Mm -hmm. But. Still that poke Farah, more dive now though to support the tanks going on in and look at where Buckeye is, he's already so far back. DYL's not going to be there to join him, but I mean with Ash hitting the floor, the Sigma, everybody taking a lot of pressure. Though you do have Flounder cleaning it up out from the hotel, will be able to put his foot down. Nearly one tick taken, but Darkness should be able to put their toes back on the objective and stop Hawking College. They don't have much to actually stop Snorty right now, though. Already out of barrage, he's just gonna throw it out. Maybe a bit ambitious there, as he'll get picked out of the sky by Munch Sacks. But respawns have come back. This is a very interesting fight, a long fight at that, but one that Hawking College can't seem to really get a solid foothold in. Yeah, no, uh, there you go. Dartmouth doing what they needed to do. Win a good fight right there. And this is a very difficult comp Ooh. to dive into, no matter what you do. You got the old oh, Eagle Bomb coming in, and it's looking strong. It lands right on top of Deadly Mouse. Now there's a great opening. That Transcendence was forced by the, uh, the self-destruct as well. Blizzard has to be used here, but it's not going to pick up any kills, and that just means Hawking are delayed, not defeated. They're going to wrap this up and get the payload movement. Yeah. That was a great whole fight there, and it never really uh, ended, you, you know. <laughs> it kind of was just going and going that whole time, which means ultimates are getting charged. The tanks were 
you know, presumably killed there, but they were able to come back with their team and then invest alt such as Valkyrie to kind of put them over the top. And Snorty is already at another barrage here, and they have the Nano to engage with the Winston. Snorty Ooh, does all right. Up. Nice pick up there. Mm -hmm. As Dartmouth are going to be able to take out the Farah, no longer have to worry about the barrage. You do have to contend with a pretty angry monkey, though. Buckeye just knocking him around, not really able to displace in a manner in which helps his team right now, though. He's going to try and knock Super Freak forward, but no one can clean that up in the tanks. Looking ever so low. There's another self-destruct, though. Shield just barely at the ready, but it's not going to save much. Saxon, Snorty's back with the barrage. Oh, boy. Hawking College, they're able to push through regardless of Dartmouth. They tried so hard to get a foothold here, but that payload ain't going to stop. Ooh, Tom won't get slept in the pack line and put away right at the end. I'd like to see a Ana that can defend herself in Humboldt right there. But they're going to have the... Uh, Dartmouth is going to have the lift and the pulse bomb right here, which could be what is going to be able to stop this cart. And all they really need to do is win three fights here, and Dartmouth could still win this because they got a lot of time off on the first point. Duplicate at the ready as well as the Nano Hawk and College have so much sustain to actually get in here. Tombald already having to use the recall. Charging forward, Super Freak just rolling into the front lines. It's not going to work out too well. Acrovitic Flux is going to whiff as well, so... This is not looking favorable here for Dartmouth. Hawking College just going to keep charging forward. Their momentum is undeterred right now, and it's looking good for them to clean up this second point and get the second map of King's Row. One more, and they'll get their second W here in NEC NECC. Absolutely. Hawking looking very strong through two maps right now, not giving up any more than two points and taking them rather swiftly right there. Flounder is going to be having a, probably a big grab right here. Yep, grab goes out onto everybody and, uh, and it's a little bit of light here for Dartmouth, you know. At least you get into the play of the game, show that you guys are doing something to move this point forward. Yeah, they get that consolation prize, right? But at the end of the day, Hawking College still very much in a favorable favorable position here. 2-0, King's Row looked arguably even more dominant than Ilios did, right? I mean, despite the yeah. fact that Dartmouth was able to get that first point, able to push the payload forward, once we got into the actual streets phase, it was really difficult for Dartmouth to find a foothold that wasn't off the back of that one nano blade that they had, right? That one yeah. shining moment for Tombald to push through for his team. But... Uh, all in all, I think Hawk and College have just been another beast. Yeah, no, absolutely. I hope I hope this team goes rather far. I hope that a team that does seem coached well like this, that has set plays and kind of executes on them consistently, is able to do a lot in a league like this. But, you know, also, you know, you don't know what this means for Dartmouth. Is Hawking one of the best teams in the league? Maybe Dartmouth isn't... Uh, you know, isn't going to be getting beaten up this bad all season, you know. It's only 2-0. It's only, you know, or it's only 0-2 here for Dartmouth, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of teams left to see, so. For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's nine long weeks here in exactly. NECC Overwatch, right? There's plenty of time to recover from an 0-2 start. Maybe once we get to 0-3, 0-4 territory, if that happens, yeah. then we're looking at a different story for Dartmouth. But, yeah. you know, I mean, they're not even technically out of this series just yet. I think there were some good adjustments on King's Row, right? Their comps looked more synergistic. It looked like they mm -hmm. were playing together a little bit better as a team. I liked the ideas that they were going for. Uh, Nano Blade, not maybe the specific synergy i would hope for on a map like king's row but it shows that they're trying to play around each other they're trying to enable each other to really pop off and find those openings in hawking college and that adjustment in the mindset i really do enjoy yeah i mean nano blade's fun who doesn't like a little nano blade you know i think the issue that it brings out for a team like dartmouth is you just don't get as much in the mid fight you know you just you mm -hmm. kind of are poking up for that blade maybe you get to go for a few sniper kills but if you're not able to secure a lot of kills on the snipers you might want to go for a sniper of your own or build up maybe a grab dragon like hawking did on the defense yeah exactly and i mean you know we go back to hawking college if we're talking just compositionally that wasn't something i didn't like to see Right, I, I mean, grab grab dragons always great. Ryan Zara is always great on King's Row. It really just seems like this team is 
drilled and prepared and knows exactly what they want to do on every map at every point. I love how they played the map too, uh, playing around those choke points, playing for a lot of time on streets phase on their defense. It gave them a very winnable position once they swapped over to their attack. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but so hopefully we can see more of that going into Havana right now. I uh, mm. with with a map like Havana, it is going to be more sniper heavy. Which you know, a character like Genji, if that's a character you want to pick on the side of Dartmouth, it could it could prove to you know maybe do something for you if you can counter more snipers. Havana has lots of long sight lines. Widow is definitely one of the best characters on this map. Ash is also a rather good character, which we haven't really got to see yet. But I mean. I think it's because people prefer to go for the one shot rather than, you know, going for the have to mm -hmm. pocket pick of Ash with Ash Mercy. Well, and I mean, if we're talking snipers, Dill 216 has been the sniper thus far, yeah, right? I mean, also. played the Widowmaker back on that fake round of ruins that we got. Yeah. Uh, had a phenomenal Hanzo just right now on King's Row. So I think if you're hawking college, you're not really sweating heading to Havana, right? This isn't something that you are unprepared for. Uh, I'm interested to see what Snorty will do on the uh, duo DPS there. If they will go for like a double sniper look or maybe have a tracer to pressure the front lines a little bit more. But I think regardless of how anything else goes in these two teams' compositions, uh, Dill216 probably going to be on a sniper and probably going to be loving it. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of hoping to see here, at least. Hanzo is a rather good character. He got a little buff of like a, maybe a month ago to his Storm Era, which... Uh, I, th I believe uh, the tanks on the side of Dartmouth have been taking the brunt end of most all series here. I am not sure who they're going to have coming out on the Rhine. Right now, it's looking like Tombald is going to be on the Rhine this time instead of Soxen. It's hard. It's funny to see a team that runs two different players on Rhine, and it's not like, oh, the Zarya is now on the Rhine, and then the Rhine's on the Sigma or something. It's the DPS swapping with the Reinhardt to see who's kind of a little bit stronger in that in that field. Mm-hmm. One more swap back for Dartmouth. Just a little bit of indecision there, but hopefully they have picked the right tank to start a momentum swing back for them. Hawking College coming on out, and Dill216, in fact, is on that Widowmaker, but Snorty going for a very ambitious pick. Love to see the confidence. Doomfist, not necessarily in the best spot he's ever been, but always a character where you can skill check your opponents you can dive hard into the back lines not much to support that doomfist when he goes in but he doesn't even need it he's just completely bodied super freak will go down in the process but a lot of pressure already on to dartmouth hawking college is just pushing them at every point and they're not gonna stop yeah doomfist is gonna end up probably being a decent little pick early shatter coming out on the defense here for dartmouth not going to find as much as they would have liked. He's getting punched and beaten around. That's what Doomfist is going to do to you. He's just going to absolutely use and abuse you. And Tombald's going to go down. Jinxie Beam also is going to take themselves down. And now it's just left to flounder to try and hold on to this cart pretty much alone. Does get slept too. Oh, that's not going to be good for his health. He's going to wake on up before anything comes to his way though. So still going to be able to juggle that shield. Still got a lot of health on it, too. So Flounder's held the line here. Hawking College still have to lock down one more fight. And Flounder is nearing that Gravitic Flux. A lot coming up for Dartmouth soon. They just have to survive long enough to actually get these ultimates. The Coalescent's going to help with that, but it's not going to help Soxen, unfortunately. Snorty once again trades one for one, though. So not the ideal Doomfist energy. And there's a nice shatter. Tombo finally getting one back on Buckeye. And Tombald's actually looks rather good here on the defense, kind of holding the line here as your main tank tends to do. And Buckeye is only being 95 to his first shatter, I believe, right now. Two minutes in, I could be mistaken on that. But Munch, Munch Sack's going to be having the transcendence to hopefully counter Buckeye's shatter if he can kind of hide away behind a corner or a wall. For the first time in such a long time, Hawk and College are on the back foot. Still plenty of time to work with. And there's a Nano Doom Fist into the back line. That's going to make it much more difficult to kill Snorty, but it still gets done. Super Freak pumps in the Storm Arrows on top of him. 
Transcendence to just carry Dartmouth to victory here. They're gonna chill out on the point, but it's not working out too well. They're getting picked off regardless. Dill swapped over to the Echo and is beaming them down with that focusing beam. One by one. And Hawking College is still going to be able to cap that first point with plenty of time in the bank. Hawking does take that, but I do have to give it to Bunch Sacks right there with the Transcendence. He does hide away mm -hmm. from the Shatter, is able to come out to keep all those teammates alive, and then it forces Jinxie Meme to use the use the Gravitic Flux to try to eventually finish them off. But they have to massively overinvest, I would say, into a fight like that for one ultimate. Honestly, Munchsax has had a pretty phenomenal performance all day long, be it on the Honor or now on the Lucio, hopefully. I believe this is the first time Munchsax has pulled out the Lucio. Oh, already a good pick there. Super Freak taking out the Honor. A lot less healing. But it's going to be a trade one for one. And if I'm running these support lines, I'm missing a Moira more than I'm missing an Honor. I'm also missing a lot of Hawking College, though. Now it's more or less just tanks. And there's another Shatter coming out from Tombald. He's not going to live to see it through. It's just flounder around right now, and he's not going to be able to hook, uh, hit that hook. He's floundering a bit himself. But take a breather, grab a health pack, just stall out some time. The payload's moving forward all the while, though. Yep. Payload does keep moving. It stopped for a little bit there <laughs> while they were trying to finish off Flounder. And one thing I'd like to point out is Snorty, even though he's been dying on this Doomfist many a time, Tomball goes down early, he's doing it very well. He's going in and finding picks of his own. He wants to find this uh, Sim right now, and uh, he does. It seems like it's back to the tried and true here for uh, Hawking College. They are once again just withering away at Dartmouth. Dartmouth sort of all over the board right now, not able to put together a wholesale defense just trickling in one by one and getting it eliminated in a similar fashion means that Hawking College just don't have much of a struggle finishing off that second objective. Yeah, I think the key for uh, Hawking right now is they don't start off just winning that neutral fight, no ults. Once they start building up those ultimates, that's when they really start to march down the field. Diva Bomb flies out, isn't going to find anything here. Bit ambitious considering the car how far away the card is. Well, speaking of ambition, Snorty. <laughs> yeah, he's been ambitious. Lit too ambitious. Ooh, yeah, I mean, I mean that is the Doomfist way, right? And you're, yeah. you're running the Diva rather than something like the Zarya, so it's not like you're going to get bubbles to walk on it. And also a pretty ambitious uh, whole hog there. Hawking College, don't feel too much pressure from it, but it at least wears down that shield enough for Flounder to hit that hook. Hawking still here, though. A whole hog answered back via the duplicate, but with a nice Dragon Strike like that, there just isn't the player power right now for Hawking to finish this. Yeah, no, not quite. Uh, good, Once again, good job on Dartmouth. And I would say throughout this series, Dartmouth slowly but surely has been picking up a little bit of steam, putting their foot down more often than not, and kind of getting getting something going, which is what you kind of need going through this game and going into the following weeks. Dartmouth have both support alts online as well for this upcoming fight. A lot to burn through here. Hawking College, it's not going to be an easy task to try and whittle away the health bars of Dartmouth. Already Buckeye is down. A Dragon Strike goes forward and it does catch Soxen, but ooh, actually, you know, with that pick and the res coming out, this is a very winnable fight for Hawking College. They're going to get another via the self-destruct and just charge forward. A Coalescence going to keep him at bay as well as a very brief whole hog there from Flounder, but not going to keep him at bay for long. This is going to be a pretty decent time bank, all things considered, for Hawking College as they finish this off. Rubik Flux, slowly but surely things being thrown in by Dartmouth just to buy some time, but it's unlikely to change the result unless you get them pick sooner rather than later. Oh, Shatter finds Flounder right there, and that was your biggest Beautiful. piece of contest right there. Now Moira's just kind of sitting around on point. Tomball comes back onto oh. the Winston. Oh, but the Dragon Strike hits two. He finds three. Super Free trying to do everything for Dartmouth right now, and is going to try to keep uh, Hawking off this point. Lucio doing what he can. Now it's just two Squishies versus a Rhine, and they will do it all. Super Freak, how many was that? Five or six? Did he get everybody? I, I don't think he got everybody. I think he got four or five there okay. in that fight. Regardless, excellent work from that Hanzo. 
got the picks he needed to turn that stall into an actual winning fight. And now, where it was going to be a good time bank for Hawking, they're working with scraps to try and make this happen. Duplicate, of course, always a great ultimate, and that Dragon Strike can zone off the cart pretty effectively but you got to get rid of these tanks if you want that to really happen right now. Hawking College, they're running out of time, below 25 seconds. That Dragon Strike comes on to this point, just trying to zone everybody away. Tomball doing what he can to keep a foot on this point. Dragon Strike trying to zone everybody off. This is just going back and forth. Shatter finds Tomball. That's their main point presence right there. And uh, Hawking College looking to get three right now. Just need to find Deadly Mouse, and they do. Can Super Freak do it again? I don't think so. That's going to be three points captured for Hawking right there, just like they would have liked it, but no time on the board. And I do have to say, uh, I like... The idea there from Super Freak, uh, he went yeah. back around after throwing that Dragon Strike. He was looking mm -hmm. for a flank, looking to pick off a support. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the opening that he was hoping for. So it, when you pull your Hanzo out of the fight to go for a flank like that, you're losing a lot of pressure onto the tanks, right? You no longer have that Storm Arrow to keep the enemy Reinhardt, to keep Buckeye at bay right, to whittle down that shield. You no longer have that pick presence, so the Reinhardt can also just swing and swing and swing. Buckeye was mu very much freed up once uh, Super Freak went for that flank. So understand the thought process. On, a, on another day, it might have worked spectacularly. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the timing just doesn't play out in his favor there. Yeah, it doesn't quite pan out right there, but that is okay because he was the main reason they were able to, uh, you know, keep, keep everything together for another fight. He was the reason they were able to live another day with his last dragon. So he wanted to see if he could, you know, come up with something creative to put his team over the top. And now Dartmouth College, if they want to stay alive in this series and not go down 0-2 in the first two weeks of NECC, they have to ca get a full cap on the attack here. Nothing else will suffice. Very long-range composition here for Hawking College. Surprisingly, though, they're not going with, like, a traditional sniper. They actually have uh, Dill216 back on that Echo, right? So they don't have the Widow or the Hanzo to really pressure this lane at the beginning of Havana as much as you would think. Yeah, no, but they're just going to use this cart to kind of hide behind while they push it. Tons of spam coming out from the high ground. Shields are getting whittled away, but they're getting this whole first corner for free as this poke comp sets up. From, uh, ooh, little hooks actually what gonna find nasty hook there from Jinx meme. That must have been max range. Dude is just nasty with it. And I mean, once Flounder's gone, that's a lot more pressure on Tombo. He's gonna find that out the hard way and get sent packing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I hadn't thought about this going into this match. I know there was some patch notes on Arisa with her not getting her headshot hitbox utilized while fortified. That could be why we're seeing these Arisa hog comps being played. I'm not entirely sure. I, ha I have not been on the game today, but that could actually be why we're seeing more Arisa from a team like Hawking. The race is looking just fine right now. So is the Roadhog. Ooh, never mind. Okay, <laughs> Jinx meme had a nice hook, but it got countered by Flounder. And now Dartmouth are pulling the trigger. They are charging forward. Immortality Field does keep Hawking College in the fight for a little while here, but not long enough for them to find the picks to turn this around. Yeah, and Humboldt is sticking around like nobody knows where he's at. Actually, Super Freak does, and he's hunting him down. This could turn into a big stagger. <laughs> Super Freak having a little trouble finding him, but Humboldt might survive Ooh. this. Maybe at least the 1v1. Visor's gonna come out, actually kills Super Freak, gets slept up, but woken up. And that's a nice setup from Snorty off the high ground. Bro, well, Humboldt was just the distraction for Super Freak right there. Hawking College, they come on back. Now they can really dig in here, right? There's so, there's no cart to hide behind anymore. There's not much cover for Dartmouth to be working around. So they just have to charge. I mean, presumably not down this giant lane, presumably through the cafe here. But even once they get out of that, it's only going to get more difficult. Will get more difficult, but they're gonna have four alts coming online here. Two tank alts with the high noon hook onto Jinxie Meme. He's gonna just heal himself and walk away. 
Hawk and College are giving some ground here. Do have to be careful. Anytime that shield is down, Flounder has openings for hooks. And, I mean, when the shield goes down, actually, Tumble can just walk forward, put a shadow on the floor, and he does so. It doesn't seem to have hit nearly enough, though. He's going for a pin. Does it manage to catch onto the Roadhog? Not the target he was looking for there. Was much more hoping for that Mercy. Roadhog's still going to go down, though. A lot of uh, damage, a lot of pressure onto that tank. And with Dragon Strike, everything just charging forward. A res does come through, so Hawking College can stick around for a while, but they just don't have the meat. Although Snorty coming from the back might have cleaned some meat off the bone himself. Still DPS doing what they can, but it just doesn't seem like enough. This isn't gonna be nearly enough, but my god, as we got halfway through that, it was seeming like all Dartmouth, but. Hawking College just kind of coming over the top there. Snorty going for that same flank off the high ground with the tactical visor, and he does get a few, but this is not going to be enough. I thought that was going to be a full hold for a split second. Still a chance here for Dartmouth. Not a lot of time to progress through the warehouse, though. Some nice shots there from Soxen, but can't quite get the pick. Does have the Deadeye available. Needs space to actually make that one happen, though. Flounder already gone to Dartmouth. Not off to a good start in this fight, and they're going to get chewed to bits by that whole hog and sent on back yeah. to spawn. Great little hold right there. Jinx Eve actually gets hooked down by Flounder. Buckeye tosses a shield down to support Jinx Eve and he just returns the favor with his own hook onto Flounder and takes him out. So good supporting play by Buckeye right there on the Orisa. But now we're going to be looking at a Valkyrie as the only defense that they're going to have on the side of Hawking to hold this point. But they're going to have the high ground too, which is almost better than any ultimate in the game. I mean, Duplicate has now come online for Dill216. Snowy does overextend a bit, get caught by that whole hog. Trying to go through this choke is pretty difficult for Dartmouth, but they're muscling their way through best they can. Without a Reinhardt, it gets even more tricky, though. Dale 216 and Snorty are just going to apply so much damage to that tiny choke. And, I mean, Jinx Meme is absorbing everything right now and taking every blow that Dartmouth can dish out. There's a duplicate, too. I mean, Dill216 just showing him how it's done. Dragon Strike to clean up. I'm not sure that one was necessary, if I'm honest. Seems maybe a bit of an overinvestment, but with a minute remaining, with still an amplification matrix and an upcoming whole hog, Hawk and College are looking just fine. Yeah, you know, maybe a little overinvestment, maybe a bit of a flex, whatever you want to call it. Snorty <laughs> seems to be flexing all map, coming out of the Doomfist, finishing it out on the Hanzo right now on the second point of Havana. And the one thing with uh, Hawking College is, is they get an ult, it's like, oh, they only have one ult, and then they charge two during the fight and use them. Window on the high ground. Oh. Uh, you, you good? <laughs> you good, Jinx yeah. you, you hooked him, but you didn't, gra you didn't shoot him. You gotta use the gun to get that kill. All right, finishes it off. So, all is not lost for Hawking College. Uh, Brief indecision, not going to cost them much here. Just tanks really sitting on the objective. Jinx Meme does get picked off. Buckeye holding the line, throwing down the supercharger. That's a little bit risky when Tombold is charging forward with a nano. Immortality Field keeps Buckeye alive, but not for very long as a shatter hits the floor. And Hawking are finally wiped off the payload. Yeah, finally. Tombold gets a few kills in the kill feed for himself. Finds a nano onto himself and moves along through that point, but it's kind of like King's Row here. The cart was so far away when they invested everything to get it moving, which is going to give Hawking a chance to come back. They're going to switch to the Wrecking Ball so that they can get these touches in and make an effective fight for Hawking to close it out right here. A little bit risky for Hawking to try to go for this contest, but, I mean, you're playing this series all the way. Why not try and stop him at every point you can? No! No! Oh! Boy. Oh no. Okay, well, <laughs> that's the 3 0. Probably not the last fight Dartmouth were hoping for, if I'm gonna be honest, but uh, at least they get to play the game again. I love to play the game. <laughs> Just sends it from spawn to what do we call the no look dragon? Finds everybody though. Didn't have to take a peek. Super Freak, 
definitely having a pretty good last map. Uh, yeah. That last fight is going to be something that Dark Myth are likely kicking themselves for later. But credit where it's due to Dark Myth. I felt like they got stronger and stronger as the series went on. They really started to warm up and play into it. If this was a best of seven, maybe they could have found a foothold. But unfortunately, it's best of three and their foot wasn't on the cart. So uh, we'll never know how far that momentum could have carried them. Yeah, that's uh, obviously a tough way to end right there. Just anytime you're like, oh, maybe we've got something going. They've switched off the tank line that they liked so that they could get the touch. Maybe you have more of an advantage to win the fight, but nobody's on it. So it's kind of hard to keep the payload moving in overtime when you got nobody to move it. Overtime is a chaotic thing and unfortunately for Dartmouth they weren't able to manage the chaos instead it will be Hawking College picking themselves up another 3-0 here off to such a strong start in NECC after a, a mixed bag of a preseason they're really hitting hard now were you asking who we might want to see because I mean I wouldn't mind talking to Buckeye personally if that's still a thing that we do over here Ooh, interview time? Oh, I'm down for an interview. Let's get it rolling here. Hopefully, we're going to be getting uh, Buckeye in. We're going to get that sorted for all of you. And, I mean, while we're talking about Buckeye, I mean, the dude was a monster. Uh, not just on the yeah. Reinhardt either, right? I mean, had a pretty decent Winston performance, albeit briefly on King's Row, yeah. as well as a very nice uh, Arisa. But the few times that we did actually see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but I'm just, I, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see what his thoughts are on what tanks are going to be good now. Winston got a little bit of a buff recently, and so did Arisa, and he did play both of those tanks. I want to know if maybe that's the reason that they went for him. But in the meantime, while we wait for Buckeye as well, here at the NACC, we're brought to you by HyperX. The HyperX mission has been to develop gaming products for all types of gamers, high-speed memory, solid-state drives, headsets, keyboards, mice, charging accessories for console players, USB drives, and mouse pads, the gaming community, and beyond. HyperX gear is the choice of celebrity ambassadors, pro gamers, tech enthusiasts, and overclocked worldwide because it meets the most stringent product specifications and built with the best in class components hyperx and speaking of best in class i believe we are about to have buckeye on here Ooh. and there he is buckeye welcome dude congrats on the win y'all were having a great time it seemed uh, thank you thank you <laughs> yeah i mean we uh practice hard for this so Glad to see we we uh, won three zero. I got a question for you right off the bat. It's just with the new tank changes coming in. Is that what maybe pushed you guys to pick more of the Arisa and the Winston on uh, Kings Row, and then the Arisa on Havana? Did those changes play any of a factor, or had you guys been scrimming the, all of those comps in the yeah, past? We've actually Arisa Hog was probably our best comp. So mm -hmm. as soon as the Arisa change went live, we immediately said, "Yeah." Uh, she doesn't take damage to crits mm -hmm. and fortify, mm -hmm. so we should definitely play more of us now. Mm -hmm. That went through today, correct? I believe. Yeah, yeah, wow, that, today. That's very lucky for you guys, obviously. Do you have anything you want to say, Paul? Uh, I just want to talk about the other main tank that you were playing a lot of, Reinhardt. Seemed like you were having a pretty fun time on that. Now, you, you said you're very comfortable on the Orisa. You guys comfortable on the... Uh, the pulled pork combination in general, but you didn't seem to miss a beat on the Reinhardt. Are you just, are you one of those main tank players who's able to pick up pretty much any one of the tanks and really vibe with it? Or uh, is, is Reinhardt a little bit more tricky for you? Do you feel? Uh, definitely. I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on every main tank I could pick up. But as when you have a good Zarya on your team, it just makes your Fair. job so much easier as Ryan and, just and with your DPS too, making sure they're just shredding the enemy line shield so they can't really move up as well. It just makes your life so much easier. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, now you guys are 2-0, right? You've gotten off to a great start here. I do want to ask, are there any other teams you're keeping your eye on? Anybody you're maybe uh, excited to play, looking forward to that match later on? Um... I, I would say 
uh, Sanctuary College would probably be our next week opponent. Would probably be one I'm keeping a close eye on just because uh, recent talks I've heard about players on there that will be uh, challenging. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, we're excited for that match next week then. Uh, Neely, you got anything else for our lovely main tank here? I don't have anything else. I just want to, you know, congratulations on a 3-0 win, making it 6-0 on the season is always what you want to see going at the start of a league. And I mean, it's always good to be led by a very strong main tank like yourself. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Perfect. Uh, well, before we let you go, anyone you want to shout out from your university, your life, your team, anything uh, just while you're here? Uh, yeah, uh, just shout out to my teammates, uh, Jinx, Snorty, uh, Septic Dart, Envolt, and uh, Dylan. Just it, without them, I wouldn't be able to play like I do. <laughs> Love that. Love the wholesome energy. Thank you again, Buckeye, and congrats on your win. You're welcome to hop on out now, as uh, we're probably going to hop on out here, Neely. I believe we're going to be headed on to the second match shortly, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. Should be an entertaining one. I didn't actually pick up who they were, who, what the next match for NECC was going to be, but... I believe it is Northern Essex Community College versus Lincoln Land Community College. So community uh, college battle there. That should be a fun one to see. That'll be it uh, for myself. And I believe you as well, Neely, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, I will not be. Uh, yeah. All right. We're going to be hopping on out of here, but you're going to be graced with two phenomenal casters for the second series. More NECC Overwatch coming at you after a quick break.
Um, you know, uh, 